Yeah, weak ass burp. So here's my prototype of my high pressure centrifugal pump. I built it out of uh, some old cat litter jugs and some PVC pipe and wooden dowel pin for a drive shaft. And uh, that's screwed onto the impeller. I drove it with my 20 volt Dewalt drill and tested it out in my bathtub. And the thing actually put out quite a bit of pressure and, and water. It, like, it was spraying water everywhere. It was hard to keep it in the bathtub. So I was pretty satisfied with that and decided to go forward with building one out of metal. <laughs> so I designed the whole pump out on paper first. Had to uh, do some math, figure out the area and volume of the uh, <clears throat> discharge to make it make a rectangle shaped discharge have the right volume for a one and a half inch hose. And <clears throat> also designed the uh, impeller, had to figure out the angle of the vanes that I uh, basically referenced uh, other impellers from the internet off other pumps and figure out the angles and the radiuses off of those. So it's approximately the same as a, another type of pump. <clears throat> and here's the volute housing. And there we go, about ready to start building. Went to a local hardware store and got this three quarter inch flat steel to design the, uh, the pump impeller veins out of. And in order to get the curve of the veins, I had to do a a one and a half inch radius on the curves. I found this hockey puck that just so happens to be a three inch puck. So I ended up wrapping the bar around that puck to get the right curve. <clears throat> then I used a hacksaw to cut out the, the veins at the right lengths. And it worked pretty well. This is the outer plate for the impeller. It's four inches in diameter and the two inch hole in the middle is where the water comes in. Here's the back plate for the impeller. I cut it out with a scroll saw and I actually scribed the, uh, the location of the impeller vanes on it and uh, that's going to be bolted onto the drive shaft of the water pump housing and uh, yeah it'll be wind up being a uh, three quarter inch thick impeller so I picked up these automotive exhaust couplers and they're going to create a sleeve system for the inlet of the pump the one on the lower half is going to actually be attached to the impeller and it's going to rotate inside the one on top which will be attached to the case of the pump and that'll help prevent water from recirculating from the high pressure side into the low pressure inlet and losing pressure that way so it'll make the pump a lot more efficient that way and this will be on top of that just like that and it'll be shortened right up to the shoulder there i bought one with a flare so it helps give the water a bit of a radius to flow around instead of just a sharp 90 degree edge edge so here I've got the impeller vanes all bent and cut out and placed on the back plate in their positions where they'll be welded. And you can see the top plate sitting right next to it and that'll be welded on top of those just like this. Before I welded the impeller vanes on, I put a taper on the leading edge of the vanes it helps the water flow a little more efficiently. So instead of it flowing around a sharp 90 degree corner, it'll flow around more like a 45 degree corner along the leading edge of that vein as it flows from the inside of the impeller to the outside. So I found this old Chrysler water pump laying in my backyard. I'm gonna use it as the uh, drive shaft and the seal and the bearings for my pump. And I actually have the pulley too, so I can use a belt to drive it. And I cut off the old impeller vanes I'm going to use that plate just as a mounting boss for my impeller that I'm building. And I'll put a plate of steel over it to make a nice flat surface for my pump to mount to. And all those big coolant holes uh, for the hoses hookup, I'm going to plug those up with some type of cork. So here's the veins after I finished welding them on. The welds aren't the prettiest, but they're strong and got good penetration. I, my welder only has high or low voltage, it doesn't have in between. <clears throat> I tried doing it on low, but I wasn't getting enough penetration that way. So I did it on high, and I had to keep starting and then stopping, and letting it cool off just for a second and starting again, so I didn't burn all the way through. In order to make some centered 
guiding marks and uh, also a centering hole in the pump, I used a drill to drive the drive shaft while I took a drill bit and I stuck it in the center of the shaft. And the reason I did that instead of just drilling it with a drill is while it's spinning, holding the bit stationary, if it's not centered, the bit will wobble a little bit. So when the bit was not wobbling, it was perfectly steady, I knew the hole was centered. So that worked pretty well. Here I've started mounting the impeller onto the pump and I took that center hole that I drilled and I tapped it out and I put this little bolt in there, used that as my centering bolt and also drilled those six holes around the circumference of it and those are going to be my mounting bolts. I, uh, I tapped them out to the size of these little machine screws that I have and <clears throat> the, uh, I'll actually lock tight those in when I do final assembly. I use machine screws because they're plentiful. If any of them fall out or break, I've got plenty more extras. And that's a good thing to have when you're out in the field. Here's a little look at the machine screws that I'm using to mount this thing on there. There's one in there now. <clears throat> and I got a whole box of these things. There's quite a few in there. Cheap and plentiful. This is what it will look like with all the bolts in. So that's the direction it will be spinning. So, aside from the shitty welding job, I've, uh, I've got the outer plate of the impeller welded onto the, the vanes. And uh, before I did, did that, I drilled those holes because I didn't want them to be in the way while I was doing that. Now I just need to weld that intake collar on. And uh, here it's welded on. I still have some splatter and stuff to clean up, but it's, it's the uh, final assembly. So here's the backing plate for the water pump housing that I'm building. And it's going to basically adapt that old automotive water pump housing to the new water pump housing that I'm build, building. <clears throat> It'll make a good ceiling surface. And uh, what I actually wound up doing is I had to make two of these and make it double thick for a spacer effect. And I welded the, the two together. <clears throat> and uh, there's also there's a gasket between both water pump housings, the automotive one and the one I built, that, to seal up the water inside. <clears throat> so here I took the impeller and I used a belt sander to give it a bit of a smooth finish because there's a lot of crappy welds and splatters sticking out and it's gonna be a pretty tight clearance case and you don't want that stuff scraping around inside there <clears throat> yeah without those tight clearances I won't be able to build a lot of pressure <clears throat> and here's what the case is gonna roughly look like so you can see the the volute shape taking place <clears throat> I made it a square a rectangular shape pump if you look at it from a cross section wise just because it's a hell of a lot easier to build than a rounded chamber and it still works pretty well you can see the case starting to take shape here I've welded on the inlet tube and that's where the, uh, the inlet tube that's mounted on the impeller is going to ride that right there it'll actually fit right inside there and rotate inside it you can see the, uh, the volute shape of the case starting to come out. I got it clamped on in the position that it will be welded. Here I've got the uh, the casing tack welded together and eventually I'll weld it all the way around the circumference of that. And I'll show you how the impeller sleeve will actually slip inside the case sleeve and rotate inside there. And that's where that seal will be to keep the water from recirculating. So here it is all welded together. The biggest issue I came across with doing these real long welds on this uh, this sheet of metal was it would warp and uh, and that caused issues later on with uh, trying to fit the thing together without it scraping or anything. <clears throat> I think next time I would definitely use some thicker steel <clears throat> for the uh, the sheet metal. Uh, but this stuff was this is all they had in that 
that size of sheet at the hardware store where I get my nice discount on metal. Can't even tell the difference between that and a cane, can you? <laughs> there the impeller is sitting inside the housing. It's checking for clearance issues. There weren't any, so that's good. Here I've got the backing plate clamped on the old water pump housing. I'm, uh, I'm going to mark out the locations for the bolt holes with the same bolt holes that are on the water pump housing. I'm going to use those to bolt everything together. Here's the drive shaft end of that. I'm actually going to use this Kohler 4 horse K91T motor that I found in a shed out in my yard. It's a pretty complete motor. I guess they're pretty tough. So here's what it's going to look like when it's uh, assembled. I uh, used some angle iron and just clamped the whole thing together. <clears throat> the, uh, if you look closely, you can actually see the backing plate. There's two layers to it. I needed to make it double thick for a, basically to make a spacer. The, uh, the sh drive shaft that the impeller mounts on actually protrudes a little bit past the gasket surface of the old uh, automotive pump housing and so it actually stuck up and was rubbing on the inside of the case that I built so in, in order to compensate for that I you know I made a double thick backing plate and there's that gasket in there that helped and there's also another gasket that's going between the, the housing I built and the backing plate <clears throat> and all that together actually helped really it created enough clearance so here's my uh, semi-finished product it's spinning free See where the belt pulley bolts on. No binding anymore. <clears throat> I wish I had a lathe. That would have made this job a fuckload easier, but yeah, whatever. Fucking sandpaper and files work pretty well, I guess. I still need to make the adapter for the outlet, but, you know, I can do that pretty easily. Test spun it by running the pulley up against my belt sander just to see how it handled high RPMs. It did pretty well actually. Next step is to hook it up to my motor, which I actually need to get running. I just got the pieces for the carburetor in, a new float. And then I can hook it up to there and run it, see how it goes. So the, uh, <coughs> the impeller was catching too much with the really long pipe sticking out of it because before it was about that long. It was catching because it, it didn't have it, you know, 100% centered, and there's very small clearances there. So I shortened it, haven't had a problem since, and it still has a nice, a pretty damn good seal. So I just thought I'd highlight that real quick. Here's the motor that I'm going to use to power this pump. It's a Kohler K91T 4 horse. I had to rebuild the carburetor, and the float was crushed. And uh, I was going to couple the pump straight up to the motor, but I think it'll be easier if I just run it with a belt, mount it all on a plate, and align everything that way. Here I've got the pump and motor all mounted on this piece of C-channel that I found. And the, uh, the motor I had to offset and put some, uh, some square bar in there to Hold it to hold it on. The uh, this pulley I found it on an air compressor. It was the driven pulley, but it had the right shaft diameter size, so I took that off. I'm using it as a drive pulley in the motor. And the the pump was pretty easy to mount. I just took a piece of flat steel and I mount welded it vertically to that C channel and drilled a few holes in there. <clears throat> the pump mounts straight to that. And here you can see that square bar I put on to offset the motor. It was hanging like two-thirds off the side so I had to do that and there's that flat steel holding the pump on I think this thing's ready to go for a test drive so to plug up the old coolant ports where the hose is connected I cut down a few saplings out in the yard and they were the right diameter I made corks out of them to plug them up pounded them in with a hammer they worked pretty well
Here's the casing opened up. I just finished welding on the, uh, the adapter to go to a round. It's a one and three quarter right now. I gotta reduce it down to one and a half. There's the gasket I'm using, it's just a paper gasket. And got that thing all welded on. Now it looks like a regular water pump outlet, sort of. Let's see how it works. There she is all put together. Show you the uh, clearance I have inside with the the uh, impeller. It's pretty tight clearance, but that's how you want it. It's just it's hard to keep it. You got to keep it perfectly centered so it doesn't scratch or scrape up against the housing because that'll cause it to bind up. Which is why I had to shorten that thing because it was really binding up when it was sticking out real far. It would wedge itself in there and lock up the motor on me. Yeah. Let's try her out soon. With the hose. <laughs> couldn't understand what I was saying. It was me bitching about how hard it was to prime this pump. It took me probably an hour and I was walking around in icy cold water and got soaking wet. But I finally got it primed and I had a hose on there, an inch and a half hose, and it, it wound up just blowing the thing off. It wasn't clamped on very well. <clears throat> but the thing seems to put out pretty good flow and pressure. <clears throat> 